when you're thinking about something you don't understand, you have a terrible, uncomfortable feeling called confusion. It's a very difficult and unhappy business. And so most of the time, you're rather unhappy, actually, with this confusion. You can't penetrate this thing. Now, is it, the confusion is because we're all some kind of apes that are kind of stupid, working against this, uh, trying to figure out to put the two sticks together to reach the banana, and we can't quite make it, the idea. And I get that feeling all the time that I'm an ape trying to put the two sticks together. So I always feel stupid. Once in a while, though, every, the, the, banana, the sticks go together on me, and I reach the banana. Salut à tous, alors voilà, je voulais essayer euh, un nouveau concept d'épisode, c'était simplement de laisser parler euh, des, des, des gens qui m'ont influencé, des gens que je trouve très intelligents, et là, euh, je voulais simplement commencer avec Richard Feynman, qui est un physicien. Euh, D'habitude, je ne suis pas forcément intéressé en, en, dans la physique, euh, mais j'ai découvert ce, ce mec-là euh, il y a ça, quelques mois, et euh, j'ai réalisé avec quelle facilité il arrivait à transmettre euh, son savoir, avec quelle facilité il arrivait à, à, à passionner un peu tout le monde et à parler facilement de ce qui l'intéressait. Et là, dans ce, dans ce petit extrait que vous allez voir, il va parler de pourquoi les arbres viennent euh, de l'air plutôt que euh, de la terre. Et c'est très intéressant, on va comprendre un petit peu plus euh, par rapport au carbone, par rapport à l'oxygène. Euh, et, et au final, c'est très accessible à tout le monde. Donc j'espère que ça va vous plaire. Faites-moi savoir si le format de, ces, de ce genre de format d'épisode vous plaît aussi et euh, j'essaierai d'en de refaire un petit peu dans le futur. Donc j'espère que cette vidéo va vous plaire et je vous laisse maintenant en compagnie de Richard Feynman. Les atomes like each other the different degrees. Uh, oxygen, for instance, in the air would like to be next to carbon and if they get near each other, they snap together. If they're not too close, though, they repel and they go apart, so they don't know that they could snap together. It's just as if you had a ball that was trying to climb a hill and there was a hole it could go into, like a volcano hole, a deep one. It's rolling along, it doesn't go down in a deep hole because if it starts to climb the hill and then rolls away again. But if you made it go fast enough, it'll fall into the hole. And so if you have something like wood in oxygen, there's carbon in the wood from a tree, and the oxygen comes and hits it, carbon, but not hard enough, and it just goes away again. The air is always coming, nothing's happening. If you can get it faster by heating it up somehow, somewhere, somehow, get it started, a few of them come fast, they go over the top, so to speak, they come close enough to the carbon and snap in, and that gives a lot of jiggly motion, which might hit some other atoms, making those go faster, so they can climb up and bump against other carbon atoms, and they jiggle, and they make mothers jiggle, and you get a terrible catastrophe, which is one after the other. All these things are going faster and faster and snapping in, and the whole thing is changing. That catastrophe is a fire. It's just the way of looking at it, and these things are happening. They perpetual, once it gets started, it keeps on going. The heat makes the other atoms capable of reaching to make more heat to make other atoms, and so on. So this terrible snapping is producing a lot of jiggling, and if I put, with all that activity of the atoms there, and I put a cup of coffee over that massive wood that's doing this, it's going to get a lot of jiggling, so that's what the heat of the fire is. And then, of course, uh, if you see, this is what happens when you start to think, you just go out and I wonder where, how did it get started? Why is it that the wood's been sitting around all this time with the oxygen all this time, and it didn't do this earlier or something? Where did I get this from? Well, it came from a tree. And the, the substance of the tree is carbon. Where did that come from? That comes from the air. It's carbon dioxide from the air. People look at trees and they think it comes out of the ground. The plants grow out of the ground. But if you ask where the substance comes from, you find out where does it come from? The trees come out of the air? They surely come out of the air. No, they come out of the air. The carbon dioxide in the air goes into the tree and it changes it, kicking out the oxygen and uh, pushing the oxygen away from the carbon and leaving the carbon substance with water. Water comes out of the ground, you see. Only it had to get in there. It came out of the air, didn't it? It came down from the sky. So in fact, most of a tree, almost all of the tree is out of the ground. I'm sorry, it's out of the air. There's a little bit from the ground, some minerals and so forth. Now. Of course, I told you the oxygen, we, we know the oxygen and carbon stick together, very tight. 
How is it the tree is so smart as to manage to take the carbon dioxide, which is the carbon oxygen nicely combined, and undo that so easy? Ah, life, life has some mysterious force. No, the sun is shining. And it's the sunlight that comes down and knocks this oxygen away from the carbon. So it takes sunlight to get the plant to work. And so the sun all the time is doing the work of separating the oxygen away from the carbon. The oxygen is some kind of terrible byproduct, which it spits back into the air and leaving the carbon and water and stuff to make the substance of the tree. Then when we take the substance of the tree and stick it in the fireplace, and they, there's all the oxygen made by these trees, and all the carbon would, would be much prefer to be close together again. And once you let the heat to get it started, it continues and makes an awful lot of activity while it's going back together again. And all this nice light and everything comes out, and everything is being undone. You're going back from carbon and oxygen back to carbon dioxide. And the light and heat that's coming out, that's the light and heat of the sun that went in. So it's sort of stored sun that's coming out when you burn it. The log. Next question, how is it the sun is so jiggly, so hot? I gotta stop somewhere. I'll leave you something to imagine. <laughs>